that last worship song. That was a lot of fun. Now friends, over the past month, we've been talking about the first church or the early church. Remember, we talked about how church is so much more than just a building. It's not just a building. The church is the people of God, right? We are the church. You've got it. Wow, you guys caught on quick. So we are the church and all month long, we've been learning about how God wanted his church to be, right? And so two weeks ago, we talked about prayer. And last week, we talked about serving others. God wants us to pray. God wants to hear from us, right? We talked about how we can't just not talk to our friends, right? That would be weird. If I'm sitting next to Miss Shahanna here, I'm talking to Miss Shahanna. That's how it works, right? So if God is always with us, why are we talking to him? We should do that. That's important. So we talked about prayer and we talked about serving others. See, God wanted us to serve others, and when we do that, it pleases God. And there are so many different ways we can do that. And we talked about just a few of those ways last week. Now, right now, I'm going to ask you, how many of you guys served others last week or this past week or this weekend or today even? Raise your hand. Wow, that's awesome. Good job, friends. When you serve others, you're really serving God because the Bible talks about that. Remember, the Bible says that when you serve others, you please God. That's pleasing to God. When we obey God, we are pleasing him. And so we want to do that, right? When God tells us to do something, we, we do it, right? He doesn't force us to do it, but he wants us to do it so that we can live our best life his way, right? God's ways are the best ways. And so today we're going to be talking more about how God wanted his church to be. And so today we're talking about community, okay? And community is very important. In the first church, the early church, they believed in community and having community with others. So let's take a look. Here we go. 
Here at Triple C, carving clearer Christianity, we know that the walk of faith can be filled with a bucket full of challenges. But hey, it's not like it's rocket science. Hello, I'm Dr. Marvin Orville Blauven with Triple C Laboratories. We exist for the sole reason of clearing up the fog that confuses a proper understanding of the Christian lifestyle. The third one, sounds like a donkey or a monkey, correct? I concur. Take for instance, church small groups. The idea of stepping outside a large church environment that induces anonymity and into a smaller community that induces vulnerability makes some people so nervous it induces vomiting. A larger church experience is certainly of the utmost importance, for it solidifies the spiritual and the philosophical, but not the personal. For what you believe to turn into how you live, you must be connected with people. People who know you and love you and are willing to walk through life with you. Life can be treacherous. It takes a God-serving community who truly knows the specifics of your life to serve as reinforcements. Life was never meant to be lived in solitude. One can have all the head knowledge of Christianity in the world. And yet, if he attempts to live it all alone, he's sunk. <laughs> Clever phrasing. That is the beauty of the small group. We believe it is going to make life more complicated when, in reality, it makes life more doable. It's just like my fingers. Here's the church, and here's the steeple. Open the door, and all are spiritually emaciated from head knowledge with no practical application. Now, here's the house. Here's the chimney, open the door, and a smaller cadre of individuals becomes immersed in a positive habitual cycle of reinforced faith living. Now, post small group, here's the church, here's the steeple, open the door, the church is full to bursting with people hungry for what they see alive in the lifestyles of healthy attendees who have their faith reinforced through small groups. That is the purpose of small groups. That theory may become practicality and that truth believed may become truth lived daily. I'm Dr. Marvin Orville Blevin. And small groups are not rocket science. Wow, friends, thanks for watching that video with me this morning on how we can come together and how important community is, right? So remember, we talked about how we are the family of God. We are the church. And with a church, community is very important. And we can come together, even if it's just two of us. It could be two of us or it could be 500 of us. When we come together, we are having community with one, one another. We are having community with each other. And so friends, we can sit and learn from each other. We can sit and just talk together. We can sit and encourage each other. We can come together and pray for one another. We can come together and, and, and tell each other what we're feeling or, or what we're thinking or what we're going through and give each other ideas. See, God didn't intend for us to do life alone. God wanted us to come together with other believers and do life together. And when we do that, we are pleasing God. And so friends, when you gather together with your friends, with other believers at, at home, at the library, at school, you are pleasing God. When you come to church on the weekends, we are gathering together for a community, whether there's two of us or whether there's a thousand of us, right? We are gathering together. We are coming together and being the church and having community with one another. And so that's very important. And the first church, the early church, they did that. And so see, God still wanted us to do that even all of these many years later because community is important and it's pleasing to God. So friends, before we go today, I want to worship with you one last time, okay? Let's stand to our feet. Let's worship God. Let's join together in community this morning. You guys are joining me. I'm joining you. Let's stand to our feet and worship together. Here we go.
Of fun. Thank you so much for joining me yet again for another great lesson and another great worship song. Friends, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for trying to please God. Thank you for trying to learn more about how you can become more like Jesus. And you know what? I'm trying to learn more about that too. And so it's important that we come together and have community with one another so that we can learn from each other. We can encourage each other. We can just be with each other. Friends, before we go, I would like to pray for you and with you today while we have community with one another. Bow your head and close your eyes and let's talk to God today. God, thank you so much for this day. God, thank you for my friends that are watching online or joining us in person this morning. God, thank you for giving us your word. God, thank you for being there with us, God. Thank you for allowing us to come together and have community. God, we know that's so, so, so important. God, please help us this week and every week to join together with other believers, whether it's two of us or whether it's 500 of us, God, so that we can learn from each other, encourage each other, be with one another, pray over one another. God, you didn't intend for us to do life alone. 
God, please help us be reminded of that this week and every week. God, we love you so much. And everybody said, amen. All right, friends. Well, I will join you next week for another fun lesson. See you later.